Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. In this video, we're going to get into an exciting exercise and it's called the vertical eighth climb. Let's go. In a vertical eighth climb, we basically do the same steps as with a horizontal eighth climb. You need two independent points of contact at all times. That means if you're going to move, you need to make a third one first. We will be doing it New school, that means we have two cow stills and a positioning lanyard, and I'm using a grillon, but something that if I'm suspended in it, that if somebody wants to rescue me, it's real easy to lower me into a rescue system. Also, for me, it's very easy to adjust to make it shorter or to make it longer. I have my two cow stills with two foot loops. I have my normal foot loop and I'm using an etrier or my little step ladder as my lower foot loop. How am I going to do this? Well, I'm suspended. I have my feet on the floor, but let's say I'm suspended. Then I'm gonna move my top cow tail, which would normally be my forward cow tail, up and I create three points of attachment. Lock the carabiner. I have one, two, three. So now, I can move the bottom one up and I put it underneath my positioning lanyard. Those steps are basically the same. What I keep in my mind is you from two to three, from three to two. During the last assessment we had here, the assessor had the little mantra going long, long, short, long, long, short, which is also Move your cow tails, move yourself, move your cow tails, move yourself. Long, long, short. All right, so now I'm gonna get my feet off the floor. I put one in the ladder and the other one in my foot loop. And all I have to do is stand up, shorten my grillon a little bit, take one step higher in my little step ladder. I will move this one up a little bit and clip my grillon or my positioning lanyard underneath. And I will show you in a minute why I do it like that. So here we go, I stand up, put it underneath, sit back down, and now I've made my step. If I would do that the other way around, like so, and I hang in it, now it's hard for me to undo the carabiner. That's why I clipped a new one behind. So let me correct that again. So I went from two to three, three to two. I moved myself. I'm going to make three points of contact again. One, two, three. I can move one, move the bottom one, and I put it underneath because I'm already suspended in it. If I would stand up into this carabiner, I would lock this one and it would be hard to take out. So this is the opposite from the top one. I'm going to stand up again, clip it underneath, sit back down. It's that easy. I make, from two I go to three again, from three I go to two again, from move myself, sit back down, move the top one, move the bottom one. Move myself again. Miss. Back into three points of attachment. If you like vertical eight climbing, and even if you don't like vertical eight climbing, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to always be notified when we release a new video. So as you could see, it's fairly quick and fairly easy if you have all your lanyards and everything at the right length and the right height. That's the reason I'm using the foot loop or the ladder, the etrier, because I can make it shorter, I can adjust it really easy, I just put my foot in a different loop. I take care to clip in 
the carabiners and the right, at the right spot, behind or above, it depends on where you're going. So I will go a little bit further to the top and I'm gonna come back down. And after that, I will tell you the things you have to really be mindful of when doing this. So the common faults, basically. So up a little bit. What I do now is I count again. I've been talking, but I need to focus again on what, what, what have I done. So I count my points, one, two, three. I need to go up so I can put the bottom one higher behind my positioning lanyard. Lock the carabiner. I can move myself up, move the top one, move the bottom one, move myself again. Move the top one again. I've arrived at the top, did my work, and I need to come back down. Everything reverses, but the principles stay the same. First you make three points before you can go back onto two. Bottom one goes down first. Then the top one comes down, but this is what changes. The top one comes down, but when I went up, I had it over here all the time. But now if I want to take out my positioning lanyard, I have to stand in this foot loop and now I squeeze the carabiner here and it's hard to get out. So that's something that changes. The top one comes down and goes behind the positioning lanyard. I take my positioning lanyard and step down, sit back down. I do it on top because now I'm leaning back into it and I need to make three points again. And because I'm behind it, it's easy for me to take out. From three back to two. Remember, behind, but I do some little rope management first. And it's real nice when the carabiners run smooth. Makes life a lot easier. Keep my foot in the foot loop. Yeah. All right, before we get into the common faults or the major attention points, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video. A sponsor of this video is Industrial Klimmen, and as you can see behind me, it's a beautiful training facility where you can come in for all your work safely at heights related training. You can come in for your IRATA, your GWO training, rope rescue training, anything in between. If you need any gear or advice on gear, you can visit the store, which is behind this wall, and you can try it out. Or if you're not able to make it in person, you can always visit the web store. Link will be in the description. I will make two more steps down and I'll show you what the common faults are. The major thing to pay attention to when doing a vertical eight climb is your fall distance or fall factor, which we always want to minimize. And with cow tails, we have like the rule, never more than fall factor one, but keep it 30, 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters max, because it's, it is a dynamic lanyard, but the softer you land, the better it is. So we never want to go above fall factor one. These, this distance of the anchor points is perfect. It's almost like it was made for this. In real life, you will have situations where the distance will be almost like skipping a bolt. Basically, if you make this, you drill the holes as high as possible and you skip a bolt. But for safety-wise, it's not as good. Now, there are people where we start started using um, shock absorbers from the ASAPs as your bottom anchor point, that if you fall your full factor two, that you have a shock absorber. 
it works or it might work, but still it's not best practice. Best practice would be to prevent such a big fall. So if we have a really critical look at what I'm doing and if I start skipping a bolt, it would look like this. I would be suspended. So if I would be skipping bolts, my step up would be, I stand up, this is not here, and right now, this is my bottom point. If I would take this out and my top one would break, I would have a pretty big fall, more than fall factor one. Let's get safe again. That would be more than fall factor one into a dynamic lanyard. Not comfortable and you will hurt yourself. So looking at it like that, in this situation, I'm suspended here. If I would fall, my anchor point is here, it's just above or just below fall factor one. It's like this much difference, but some assessors are very critical on it and they have a good right to be so. So I make my third point of contact. And if this one would break at that moment, I would have a less than fall factor one, which is good enough. Super good enough, as Ryan would say from how not to. So I made my one, two, three, so I can undo this one, move it up, behind. That was a really nice, this is very, very safe. I move my positioning lanyard, go up, and now if I would fall, I'm still below fall factor one. So these anchor points are perfectly made for that. Other times you might have to make big steps, but be aware of what you're doing. That's the most important thing. Think about the principles. Let me know in the comments what you think of this climbing technique. I'm really curious. It's always a good topic of conversation. And uh, I will read the comments and respond to that. And I hope to see you in the next video. Stay connected.